Hello and welcome back. It has been a while. I wanted to give you an update of what I was working on and uh, share stuff with you, which you can harness if you are a patron of mine. So the first thing I wanted to show you is the Ableton Live object model in a different format. This is super useful when you are working on user actions, for example, or when you want to pull information out of Ableton via a variable, as I showed in my variable bonus video. So let's have a look. So you might be familiar with this overview put up by Max. I like the overview here, this table with all those different connections. When you go down here, the overview isn't great because you can quickly lose where you actually are. So, and there's not really everything in there, what's available in the live object model. So there's a guy from France, um, an old Ableton veteran called Julian Bale, and he put out the unofficial API documentation. And this is super useful because here he used a Python API Walker script to pull all the available data and descriptions out of the doc strings. So here you have everything and literally everything which is available in the Ableton Live object model. So I switched to use this document, but it also is like sort of like not as ple a pleasure to read. And sometimes you want to just like um, have a better overview and more, more connections. And I thought when I was browsing, it should be possible to have this like in a tree foldable structure, right? And that's what I did for a um, online course at Harvard. And I wrote a script which takes this data pulled by the API Walker script and puts it into a format which you can open in a mind map like this. So for example, here you have the Ableton live objects model of 12.05, that's the beta version. And here you can drive in and have everything. It's easier to, to focus in when, when you want to really focus in, you can um, zoom in basically. And here you have the whole path and uh, the description is also in there, but like in a friendly readable manner. So that's my first thing I want to uh, show you and give to you. So there is a site um, on my website. Um, <clears throat> it's it's uh, the access is restricted. So you need a user and a password, which will be linked down in the video description. And here you have the same thing online. So here you can um, browse through this thing and have the same thing and, and uh, values, methods, and also listeners um, are in a different color code, okay? And I will link the Xmind mind mapping file and an OPML if you like um, as well. So you can import that in any mind mapping software you like, or you can just use this online thing because what's really neat is you can search for stuff. So for example, let's search for sample. And then you have to wait for a second and then it will open all those, um, all those things with sample, but this sort of like didn't work. So let's reset and then try again. So this reset button is really important. Let's see. No, <laughs> there's nothing in there. What's happening? Maybe file, let's see. File path, which was added in the latest, yeah. For example, here, file path. Gets both of represent audio clip. There's a listener for this and also sample. And also for song, this class represents a live set, live song, file path, gets the current live sets on disk. So this is actually quite neat if you are 
searching for something, I find it super handy and I got friends who use this all the time. Next, I wanted to talk quickly about some new user actions or updated user actions. Um, as you might know, there is a um, online documentation I set up for the user action because it's much easier to maintain. And um, I'm planning to do some tutorial videos for each user actions if they make sense and they will be then linked on the um, on the desired page as well. So add quotes now works as expected. There were some quirks. So I made a user actions called concatenate. This was a request by one, a Patreon. This takes as many variables as you want and combines them all together in a new variable. Okay. So um, this is useful if you want to combine strings. I also added to the page a downloadable Ableton set where you can see where you can load the example another thing in uh, i think in ableton 12 or it's also in ableton 11 already uh, there is the possibility to control the link functionality with user actions and i wrote a simple user actions for that Mm, what else? Yeah, set var. Set var was always uh, sort of like, oh, yeah, there is one quirk I have to uh, work on. And I finally did this. Um, the first argument is always the variable name. And then it takes everything to the right and puts it into the variable. All right. So you can also use strings now with white spaces and it should be fine. What else? Yeah, a really nice feature and um, nice user actions is Q wait. It will calculate the time to the next down to the next one and will insert a wait milliseconds command to wait that it will happen that the user action the the action list you put after that will happen after the next one so this can 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 come in handy when you use stuff like uh, quantize or stop or whatever where you really want to make sure that it happens after the next one so lastly, in the Q&A session in April, someone had a request and because there was time and we were a few in the chat, um, I just started to program the user action and it turns out it's pretty cool and pretty useful. This is context binding. If you have a controller with a limited amount of encoders, you want these encoders bound to or mapped to the most important parameters actually and this is something which can be really individual so for example when you have a delay you want the feedback you want the probably the the filters and uh, for an eq you want the gains and probably the frequency um, or a third row for the um, the q um, and laid out in the way which is most um, practical to you so individual so the way you could do this is with macros right so i set up a touch osc um, mapping with like three encoders just for the sake of this video and um, i wrote some macros which will bind frequency resonance and i think the filter type and the neat thing about a touch osc it will uh, put out the labels um, but that's like in a different videos. And this is uh, bi-directional. So I've configured it with me as well. Now, when I now switch to the EQ, as you can see, th these are not, not mapped because I mapped them um, hardwired, so to say. Uh, where is it? The filter, frequency, resonance, and filter type. And you don't have those parameters in an EQ. So here I use a different um, here I use a different macro uh, to control the three frequencies, right? So by default, you can map those parameters to um, named bank and parameters, but that differs. But to show you the default, that's what I did with the default macro, but this is like giving you the in and out 
on off of the filters, right? So this is not really useful in our case, but maybe for the filter. Yeah, for the filter, that's quite useful. Um, how about for the echo? Yeah, see, this is not the, the thing you want, right? Um, so how cool would it be uh, if we would have an action which checks when you select a device checks the name and if the name is found in a list of names you predefined it will call a macro corresponding to that name and this is what i did that's the context-based listener or cbl so when i activate this as you can see the it it remapped remap those to um to parameters I predefined in a macro called node echo, right? So I have a C bind node echo. And uh, when I go to a filter, it automatically remaps it to the, um, it calls the macro C bind filter and the same goes for the EQ8. So when I go here, it calls the corresponding macro. All you have to do is to write a macro for each device and um, be sure about the name. Uh, it's case, it's non-case sensitive, so um, you don't have to worry about that. Um, when you download the file at the beginning, there are like two lines you have to take care of. This is a list of names the user action will look for, and also the prefix of the macro name is cbind in this case so mm, it will uh, combine the, the found name with the prefix so when you have something called a device called filter and you select it it will call the macro cbind filter if it does not find the device in in that list it will call um, the um, the macro default. This is all, of course, um, described here in the context binding uh, where you can read everything. I have programmed the same for a chain, uh, the chain selector listener. Uh, I haven't developed this really uh, thoroughly, but um, if you like, I could just upload that to the user actions folder as well. If you want to have a try, just let me know down in the comments. Yeah, that's it for now. Uh, please uh, come to the Q&A on Friday morning. Um, I have to run afterwards, so be sure to be there on time. I will film a video about bindings in more detail and also a video about how to set up or how I set up the OSC. Everything will be downloadable so you can have like a quick start. Yeah, that's for it. Ciao for now and stay happy, stay healthy, and always stay in control. Cheers.